1.2, physical process. So here we will focus mostly on erosion, weathering, mass movement, transportation, and deposition, and different factors affecting these fruitful processes. So in this chapter, basically, we will focus on erosion, transportation, and deposition as the three major fruitful processes creating the landforms. Weathering and mass movement are less important, but we'll cover that as well. Okay, fruitful erosion. So three major direction. One is headward. We say it is at the source of the river. So let's say we have again, okay, I think I should just show you the photo over here, right? So what happens is when the river overland flow is washing into the river source, it is washing away the sediment. You can see small sediment over here on this. So when we have rainfall overland flow, washing away this sediment into the source of the river is going to remove and potentially extend the river source further backward. So that we call headward erosion, meaning the river length is increased. So over here, we say headward erosion occurs only at the river source. So where we have removal of rock and extending the length of the river, total length of it, lengthen. Okay, the other one, we have vertical erosion or the other word we call it down cutting, meaning the river bed is being eroded by the river sediment or the river water. So let's say I have some sediment over here that is making up of the river bed. But when I have erosion, it will be kind of like removing this sediment. So the depth of the river is going to increase. That's called vertical erosion, making the river channel deeper. That is called vertical erosion. Okay. So you can see there are different landforms associated with vertical erosion. We're also going to cover that later on. And okay, next we have lateral erosion. Lateral erosion is eroding the river bank, river banks on both sides. So it's going to widen the river channel. You can see the river channel is more widened or we call it uh, the river channel more winding, meaning it's more curvy, like rather than being a very strict channel, we have a river channel that's going sideways, something like that. Okay, so lateral erosion or eroding the river bank on both sides of the river. So, okay. Then we have four major types of rural erosion. So let's take a look of the photo. Abrasion is the first one. We say abrasion is mostly responsible for down cutting. Down cutting, vertical erosion just now we mentioned because it is about the big rock bed load eroding, grinding the river bed. So let's take a look of the description. We say it's the rearing away of river bed and river bank by the load. So it is the rock against the river bed, basically rubbing it, grinding it, removing and deepening the river bed. Okay. Could also be river banks, mostly on the river bed. As a result, we have a deeper river channel. Just now we mentioned vertical erosion. Next, we have attrition. Attrition is rock against rock. So it's like coalition of rock and the breaking down of rock. Because imagine if you have two cars, like two vehicles colliding, crashing into each other, what is going to happen? Damage, right? Cracks, damage, destruction. So attrition, we say is similar to car crashing. So two rock hitting against each other and eventually becoming smaller and larger number a larger number of it because one break into two and then two break into four. So kind of like the geometric, is it? Not sure, but anyway, 
So attrition is rock against rock. It usually is not related to any of the free direction because just now we mentioned headward erosion is about at the river source, the river bank and the river bed extending further backward. Down cutting is about river bed. Lateral erosion is about river bank. But attrition is only rock against rock. It has nothing to do with the river bed, nothing to do with the river bank. So attrition is usually not that important or not that responsible for creating uh, any sort of with a landfall, except that positional, not erosional, but that positional, we'll talk about it why later on. So, but here let's focus back on it. Hydraulic action. This one, we say it is about removal of loose material along the cracks on the riverbank and the riverbank, more active along the riverbank. So what does that mean? We say that over here, when we have cracks on the riverbank, it is going to be deepened and widened by the water splashing into the crack. So just now, let's take a look. Um, over here. So let's say I have uh, a crack. I have a crack over here. So this is the river bank. This is the river water, right? So oh, let's put it this way. So usually, let's say the river level. Just a moment. The river level is something like this. And when we have a higher water level, it's going to increase, right? So let's say it filled up the, the gap of it. And then what happened is the water is going to fill the gap of the crack. So you know what's happening? So just a moment. Okay, so gap gain. So what happened is there are sometimes air inside the gap, inside the crack, the air inside the crack. And when the water fills in into the crack, it is going to force the air particle and the air inside the crack to go further inside. Okay, I give up, not going to draw it. So what happened is I have a crack over here and some air bubble inside. When the water pushes or fill into the crack, it's going to push the air further in because there's no way to escape. And as a result, we say the air inside is being compressed because it has no way out. It's only way to go is to go further inside the crack. As a result, deepening and widening the crack. Okay. So that is hydraulic action. Kind of difficult to visualize, not as straightforward as abrasion and attrition, okay? So the key is we have cracks, air inside, water fill in, air expanding the crack, okay? Uh, simplified explanation. Solution. Solution, this one is quite straightforward. We say is the removal of dissolving soluble mineral by the river water. So you can think of like you have a cup of coffee, you just pour sugar inside and you stir it. The sugar is going to be dissolved by the coffee. You know that you have poured sugar inside, but it's gone because the sugar is soluble and it's dissolved by the coffee. So in the case of river, we say the soluble minerals like calcium is also dissolved by the water and it's carried by the water, but we just can't see it. Doesn't mean it's not there, right? So. That is solution. Okay, any question? Later on, when we talk about transportation, we will see solution again. But just now, let's do a quick recap. We have abrasion, rock against riverbed, attrition, rock against rock, hydraulic action, 
air inside the crack being compressed, deepening and widening the crack. And solution dissolving soluble mineral just disappear inside the river. 